Yeah. I just wanted, I just, as you were walking in, I asked everyone who's here. Uh, this is very helpful. If you could give me a one page statement, here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to, to make it in the form of an affidavit. Mm -hmm. You hear me? Mm -hmm. Make a statement, have a note of us. In other words, you're, this isn't, I want you to take a note, I swear to you. Because mm -hmm. I'll take those to, to my committee, okay? I can use those as a basis to build hearing, hearing on this. Um, but I, but and it, so anybody that you can get a statement from, put them together, get them to me. And as soon as I, you know, as soon as I have, you know, a dozen or so to start with, you know, let's keep going. And then you put the word out through the community, everybody you know. Just tell them that the Senate wants a notarized statement of what you're going through. I want to hear it all. I want to hear the symptoms. I want to hear, you know, where you were, what you were doing, you know, when you started to have symptoms, trying to get relief from people, you know, going to different places, trying to get your help recognized, you know, your situation recognized, paths that you sought, remedies that you tried to uh, get for yourself. Uh, you know, I want to know everything, how you feel about it in particular. I want to know how you feel. I want to know what you have to deal with. Uh, and, and I will get you, you know, I'm going to, I'll get this story out, but I'm doing more than that. I, what I want to do is if you can help put together enough stuff for me, I'll, I'll hold a congressional hearing on this. And maybe I'll come here to do it, you know, instead of just do it in Washington. You can, we could either, whatever works for you, whether you want to do, do it there or here. But I think that, um, you know, like what I saw with Gulf War, it's real easy for people to bury this and move on to something else. That's what happens in Washington. And that's what happens everywhere government. They just move on to something else. Everything rushes by. Meanwhile, you're still stuck with your effects. I don't think you're making any of this. We've got the medical line. records to prove it. Well, I'm, I'm just telling you. Human, I mean, life, human life is taking a backseat to economics here. Yeah. For what? That's, human life is taking a backseat to economics. Look, it's, it's a story. But, but, I, but I, I want you to help me help you. So just put this stuff together in the form of affidavits. I want to hear the stories. And then I, then I will start the process of, of forcing Washington to look at this. I think, and not to wax conspiratorial here, but I think one of the issues that's going to come out is that the contamination hasn't been cleaned up. And we're the canaries in the coal mine. We're the first ones who are getting sick. But it's in that Discover article, Mount Sinai's spoken about it. There are going to be civilians coming down with us now. There are going to be people who weren't on the pile but who live in that area. Take a look at what the economic cleanup is going to look like. You're looking, at, you're looking at something that quite possibly affects millions of people. I understand that. And children. And, you know, it's like this is, you won't know the, the effects with the children. See, I want to look at, this is why I want to look at epidemiological studies. I want to get health records. I want to have my staff start to ask for those. Because this, this might take a while, but, but we need to start gathering information. Because I'm going to guess that you're probably going to see increased incidences of respiratory problems among children in particular. Watch children. As the development. Asthma. Okay, I want to look at that. I want to, I want to start tracking these things so you can see what was it like before 9-11, okay? And then let's start looking, you know, five Denita, years. Danita posted a story last year on uh, Stuyvesant High School. 30% <coughs> increase in asthma. Okay, there you go. I mean, now, now, look, uh, I want to know about this. You know, I want to start gathering. You pull all the information together and suddenly it starts to look different. If you will work with me to build the hearings, I'll, I'll commit to you that we'll, we'll have a, a, you know, one major hearing that will focus all the concerns that you have and start to then use that to push it back on all these people that have been ignored. I'm willing to do Within that. Within the next year? Pardon? Within the next year? Oh, yeah. Well, that's the idea. I believe you. I believe what you're telling me. Now, I want to figure out what I can do. When you came to me the other day, after that debate, you know, I, I wanted to hear what you said. My wife told me. Yeah. I've got to listen to Mr. Miller. And um, I, I, know, I knew you were telling me the truth. And I told you I'd be here. Right? Well, he drove us up all the way to Philly with Claire, and traveling for me ain't no party for any of us. He came in, he just had three major surgeries, two, three major surgeries. He's having a ball. None of us are doing great. There are little issues here that we need taking care of right now. We need them right now. Just getting 
getting coverage for simple, basic things to make our lives more, more amenable and, and livable while we're fighting for the big issues here. Well, okay, let me, let me address that. Here, here's, what, here's what I'm willing to do in addition to that. Um, I've, got, I've got a congressional staff in my district office. They do all casework, okay? And they handle a hell of a lot of cases. They're really good. So what I'd like you to do, let's start, you decide which ones should go first. But, you know, give me a few cases here to work with the people that, like, are really, you know, really on the edge and need some help. And we'll run it through our casework. Even if it's New York, it doesn't matter. It's still the United States. And I'll give it to my caseworkers. And what you have to do, you have to sign a release, and then they'll have to start working. Because by but what I can also do, I can use that information to kind of fortify our, our I got a priest in Ohio dying of cancer called Stephen Petrovich. He read the last rights at Brown Jail for 16 years. I, what I want to know, I want to know, again, you, you raise a good point, and that is that there's some people that are really on it right now, maybe some people at this table. Give me a few to start with, okay? And then if I'm able to demonstrate that we can do something, <coughs> then, I'll, then what I'll do is I'll take it to the members of Congress, you know, and just say, hey, look, we're ha I'm handling this for you, but now you've got you to help these other people. Uh, you know, if I had a bigger staff, I, I could say, give me whatever you can take, but I, I, we do 10,000. Well, take a look at this table. You've got a bigger staff. Well, you can help. We're all working on this. So if you could, if you could just give me, give me a few cases to begin with, okay? And all I need is, is, is this. I need uh, names and phone numbers and or email addresses. And just give me a basic description of what the, just a one-line description of what the problem is. Take it one step at a time. This is the beginning of a dialogue. I'm a little bit more, in, I'm much more better informed now before I walked in the door. But, you know, just as I told you that I'd come here, so I'm telling you, we'll follow up on this stuff. And you did. It, well, it takes a while, you know, but we'll follow up on it. I didn't want to wait. You know, it was just a few weeks ago. I wanted to be here because when uh, Mr. Miller came to talk to me. I yelled at him. I didn't take that as yelling. I'm from a big family. <laughs> that's the way everybody talks to I grew up. <laughs> and so when I heard that, I, I, I knew. I knew in talking to you. I could tell by your voice and your eyes that this is something that needs looking at. So that's what brought me here. You brought me here. And so I, I want to I stay on this. It takes you know, a little bit of time to put it together. But, but at least you know now that somebody's, somebody's going to look at it. I want to thank you for it. Rising to the occasion when it really matters to save people's lives. That's a big deal. When, you know, when people put themselves in a line, you don't think of what it means to you. You don't think of, oh, gee, you know, maybe I can lose my life in a moment. You just do it. Well, that, that's, that's a big deal. That's one thing. How did you think of the meeting with David? The meeting was fabulous. We got five different first responder organizations in here with Congressman Kucinich, and he wasn't doing this as candidate Kucinich, it is Congressman Kucinich. And he told us he's going to go to battle for us. So Whitman, she should go get herself a very good attorney. And we're going to actually get some relief for the first time. And this was because you, Luke, you got us up to Philly. The meeting was a step in the right direction. It was uh, an actually a, a compassionate member of Congress who listened to what we had to say. And uh, he wasn't distracted by... Uh, Outside influences, he uh, actually took notes. He seemed caring, he seemed compassionate. I've met a lot of congressmen and women, and uh, he's up there with the handful that I actually like now. And once again, it's not about what happened on 9 11, it's about what we could do now to eradicate what's going on that isn't helping 9 11 responders. Let's not talk about the negative, let's talk about the positive. And uh, I think this man has that capability. And uh, listen, We'll take it day by day and see what he actually does. And like every other elected official, you hope you're not getting political rhetoric. You're hoping that they actually do something. And I believe this man will do something.